Lieutenant, call your witness. Defense calls Colonel Nathan Jessup. Colonel Jessup, would you raise your right hand, please, sir? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you will give in this general court martial will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Would you have a seat, please, sir? Would you state your name, rank, and current billet for the record, please, sir? Colonel Nathan R. Jessup, Commanding Officer, Marine Ground Forces, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Thank you, sir. He's not here. Colonel, when you learned of Santiago's letter to the NIS, you had a meeting with your two senior officers. Is that right? Yes. The platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, and the executive officer, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Markinson. Yes. And at present, Colonel Markinson is dead. Is that right? Objection. I'd like to know just what the defense counsel is implying. I'm implying simply that at present, Colonel Markinson is not alive. Surely Colonel Jessup doesn't need to appear in this courtroom to confirm that information. Well, I just wasn't sure if the witness is aware that two days ago the Colonel took his own life with a 45 caliber pistol. The witness is aware, the court is aware, and now the court members are aware. But we thank you for bringing this to our attention. Move on, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Colonel, at the time of this meeting, you gave Lieutenant Kendrick an order, is that right? I told Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. And did you give an order to Colonel Markinson as well? I ordered Markinson to have Santiago transferred off the base immediately. Why? I felt his life might be in danger once word of the letter got out. Grave danger? Is there another kind? Colonel, we have the transfer order. You and Colonel Markinson co-signed ordering that Santiago be on a flight leaving Guantanamo at 6 the next morning. Was that the first flight off the base? The 0600 was the first flight off the base. Colonel, you flew up to Washington early this morning, is that right? Yes. I noticed you're wearing your Class A dress uniform for your appearance in court today. As are you, Lieutenant. Did you wear that uniform on the plane? Please, the court, is this dialogue relevant to anything in The particular? defense didn't have an opportunity to depose this witness, Your Honor. I'd ask the court for a little latitude. A very little latitude. Colonel? I wore utilities on the plane. You brought your dress uniform with you? Yes. Toothbrush, shaving kit, change of underwear. Your Honor! Is the Colonel's underwear a matter of national security? Gentlemen, you better get somewhere fast with this, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Colonel? I brought a change of clothes and some personal items. Thank you. After Dawson and Downey's arrest on the night of the 6th, Santiago's barracks room was sealed off and its contents inventory. Four pairs of camouflage pants, three long sleeve khaki shirts, three pairs of boots, four pairs of green socks, three OD green t shirts. Please, the court, is there a question anywhere in our future? Lieutenant Caffey, I have to ask you to state your question. I'm wondering why Santiago was impacked. Tell you what, we'll get back to that one in a minute. This is a record of all telephone calls made from your base in the past 24 hours. After being subpoenaed to Washington, you made three calls and highlighted those calls in yellow. Do you recognize those numbers, sir? I called Colonel Fitzhughes in Quantico, Virginia. I wanted to let him know that I would be in town. The second call was to arrange a meeting with Congressman Richmond of the House Armed Services Committee. And the third call was to my sister, Elizabeth. Why did you make that call, sir? I thought she might like to have dinner tonight. Your Honor, I'm going to put a stop to this. Your Honor, these are the telephone records from Gitmo for September 6th. And these are 14 letters that Santiago wrote in nine months, requesting, in fact, begging for a transfer. Upon hearing the news that he was finally getting his transfer, Santiago was so excited that do you know how many people he called? Zero. Nobody. Not one call to his parents saying he was coming home. Not one call to a friend saying, can you pick me up at the airport? He was asleep in his bed at midnight, 
And according to you, he was getting on a plane in six hours. Yet everything he owned was hanging neatly in his closet and folded neatly in his footlocker. You were leaving for one day. You packed a bag and made three phone calls. Santiago was leaving for the rest of his life. And he hadn't called a soul. And he hadn't packed a thing. Can you explain that? The fact is, there was no transfer order. Santiago wasn't going anywhere. Isn't that right, Colonel? Objection, Your Honor. It's obvious that Lieutenant Caffey's intention this afternoon is to smear a high-ranking Marine officer in the desperate hope that the mere appearance of impropriety will win him points with the court members. Now, it's my recommendation, sir, that Lieutenant Caffey be reprimanded for his conduct and the witness be excused with the court's deepest apologies. Overruled. Your Honor. Your objection is noted. Colonel. Is this funny, sir? No, it's not. It's tragic. Do you have an answer? Absolutely. My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. Maybe he was an early riser and liked to pack in the morning. And maybe he didn't have any friends. I'm an educated man, but I'm afraid I can't speak intelligently about the travel habits of William Santiago. What I do know is that he was set to leave the base at 0600. Now, are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Phone calls and foot lockers? Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. These two Marines are on trial for their lives. Please tell me that their lawyer hasn't pinned their hopes to a phone bill. Do you have any other questions for me, Counselor? Lieutenant Cathy. <coughs> Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Thanks, Danny. I love Washington. Excuse me. I need to dismiss you. I beg your pardon? I'm not through with my examination. Sit down. Colonel. What's that? I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel or Sir. I don't know what the hell kind of unit you're running here. And the witness will address this court as Judge or Your Honor. I'm quite certain I've earned it. Take your seat, Colonel.